I think in many ways, Ruby and colleagues, this project has been one that has been a rapid response to COVID-19. And this project has, in many ways, um, a very sort of practical action-based research response to our concerns about young people and language learning in Wales, uh, a different education minister to that in England, and, and how we could support language learning in a time of great crisis when schools closed, but learning wasn't closed. Here's the first slide, Lucy. Claire, can you see the slide? I can, yeah. Brilliant. Well, Great, okay. That. Yeah. So that's the context for our project then. So um, as you can see here, um, in Wales, language learning, i.e. multilingualism, is very much um, in, in difficulty. Uh, in the last in the last year, only 80% of young people chose a language at GCSE, and that is an international language, not Welsh, which is compulsory until, until 16 in GCSE. And this is a situation in decline. So um, at the moment, we know there was a very severe challenge with our young people in Wales, are wishing to study and become multilingual uh, beyond the indigenous languages of English and Welsh. The same is true for A-level, i.e. post-16, where there's been a very severe drop in students taking French, German and Spanish, our predominant European languages at A-level, or high English from Canton, um, in, um, um, in, in here in Wales. And we know that at the link between language learning in Wales, i.e. learning an international language, um, and economic deprivation is very high. So, for example, we know that in um, the most advantaged part of Wales, uh, the Vale of Glamorgan, about 28% of people, young people, choose a language at GCSE, that's 16. In Blyna Gwent, a very poor deindustrialised part of Wales, that figure is 6.5%. So there's a very, very high link between language learning, a post-compulsory phase, and economic and social deprivation. It's often a language link with a sense of mobility, travel, global citizenship, and it's those areas which are the most depressed where that um, option of language learning is the most reduced and where students are least um, encouraged to do a language. So the Welsh Government's um, response to this very, very declining situation has been a, an ongoing global future strategy to support um, language learning in schools, and it's a seven-year cycle in, in the final two years. And it also links up to, in Wales here, unlike in England, and I, I do share the colleagues' concerns about the uh, uh, political landscape for education in England. In Wales, the education is, is devolved fully to Wales, and in Wales we are moving towards a much more cross-curricular programme where we'll have languages, i.e. English, Welsh, and every other language, in one area of learning and experience, A-O-L-E. Um, and that will be around languages, literacy, and communication. And aim is to create a much more multilingual, cross-curricular, discovery-driven curriculum, unlike the current father um, top-down traditional curriculum that we see um, in England under the current Conservative administration. And there's a pledge of one million Welsh speakers by 2050. I mean, that's a really ambitious pledge, but it shows you the, the investment in multi and bilingualism in Wales. Of course, when COVID-19 hit, schools went into, um, into a period of buildings being closed, but schools not being closed. Uh, learning was displaced to home. And this is where our project, uh, MFL mentoring, which funds students to go into schools to support language learning, where we actually um, um, created an emergency scenario, we created an emergency education response by going online. And I'll hand over to Lucy now. Thank you, Claire. Um, really helpful to have the context there. I just wanted to mention as well um, the four purposes of the new curriculum because it seems ever so relevant um, following on from Catherine's really fascinating talk um, about um, focus on um, the future and how teachers are being encouraged via policy um, to focus on the preparedness for the future. Um, so the four purposes in the new curriculum really deviate away from that and I think that's a really exciting evolution and has really underpinned what we've tried to do in our response um, in this last couple of months um, via our year 13 project. So very much focusing on Key Stage 5, although we've had a lot of interest from Key Stage 4 too. So those four purposes are that we, ha we create ambitious and capable learners who are ready to learn throughout their lives enterprising creative contributors ready to play a full part in life and work healthy and confident individuals ready to lead fulfilling lives as valued members of society and number four which i think is super interesting ethical informed citizens ready to be citizens of wales and the world so within that you start to get a sense of how um 
Wales is moving towards this vision of supporting young people to see themselves as part of an international and global community. And this is where our project um, is really trying to support young people at this time where we are having shared experiences with the rest of the world, but in some ways we're ever so fragmented, particularly along socio-economic lines. I think those different um, experiences caused by levels of um, of um, socioeconomic um, standing have really come to the forefront, particularly in education where accessibility is, is really problematic. So our aim with this project, focusing on our Key Stage 5 students who will have left school in March and will be waiting now either to go on to university in October time or into the next stage of their lives, whether whatever that may be. Our aim is to target our support on engaging those learners who may not be receiving anything from their schools. A large number of our pupils have said they are getting nothing at all from their schools. So it's really to fill a void for them. We're focusing on motivation, not attainment. The whole project is underpinned by getting young people to identify with their own international identity and getting them to uncover it as well. So um, to unpick that idea that we are part of a monocultural, monolingual community, and um, particularly here in Wales where we have bilingualism written into our laws. Um, we want to provide synchronous learning opportunities. I think that's been something that's been very hotly debated over the last couple of months how schools can interact with their young people is it with teams but with cameras off is it with cameras on is it no synchronous learning whatsoever so on so forth so we wanted to provide that face-to-face -face contact the students are missing we wanted to develop critical thinking skills that are going to benefit them in the now and in the future um, i think they're so so important for so many reasons particularly at this time where we're getting a lot of very um poignant uh, news coming through we need them to be able to interrogate it and ask questions of it provide the peer peer to support so the idea is that our mentors so my students my undergraduates my postgraduates from across my four partner universities so cardiff Aberystwyth, Bangor and Swansea are leading my sessions. So these are students, university students, aged 21, 22, 20, who are supporting our young people who are aged 16 to 18. We want to develop those um, independent learning skills, which young people don't have, and they are very used to having that structured learning experience, and they've been thrown into the deep end here with independent learning, so we've really sought to provide a structured program, which helps them find their way through this maze, I think it has proven to be for a lot of young people, and to, to inquire a little bit as well, um, very much in the vein of that enterprising, creative contributor that we're looking to to um, support and generate via our, our new curriculum. To support schools, I have every admiration for our teachers and what they've tried to provide over these last um, three, four months. It's been so challenging. I'm completely inspired by Daniel and his story of what his community have done for their young learners. Um, we as a project felt very, very um, compelled to support what is a huge network um, that we've created via the project. So we, we're in over half of the secondary schools in Wales now, which is over 100. Um, so we really felt compelled to support our teachers. Um, and then to provide just some continuity and some variety to the learning. I think that was really, really important um, during this time. So just to outline what our response was, our response was to put on a 12 week program of lectures and seminars to give young people an opportunity to see what a lecture look, looks like um, and to have a go at a seminar and to have to prepare work and have to come with thoughts um, and the, the well, having to come and contribute ideas, um, which again is, is something quite new to them, to have to be curious and inquiring in their thinking to put on a series of language classes. So A-level conversation classes run entirely through the target language by my mentors, um, or taster sessions in Nepalese, in Taiwanese, in lots of different languages. So really um, trying to tease out um, that curiosity that I know our learners have, and that I think we often underestimate. And I found that really interesting um, from the talks earlier, this idea that we want a safe space and that young people are looking to um, 
immerse themselves in space, safe spaces. What I found via the project is they're also very interested to explore um, other cultures, um, not talking about COVID in these cultures necessarily, but thinking about exciting elements of these different cultures, architecturally, literary, cinematically, photographically, graphic novels. They're very interested in exploring these expressive mediums of other cultures at the moment, um, which doesn't necessarily fit with what we were talking about earlier, but I'm very, very curious to unpick that actually. Um, and then just a series of resources to support young people to do some learning by themselves at home. But again, in a scaffolded way where they understand the journey. And I think that's a really important word well, that I would use over and over again in this time is the learning journey and how we structure it and support our students to know where they're going with it. Um, it's not enough for them to just go to, a, to give them a website, off they go do the job. They really need support through that experience. So I've been surveying all of our pupils throughout um, this. I think that there's a really interesting piece to be written on this, particularly given what um, we've learned from today, really fascinating talks from other colleagues. Um, but I wanted to give you an idea of what the impact has been and then to talk a little bit about why I think we've had that impact at this time. And then Claire will finish off with why we think this is important. So over, we're in week, well, we just finished week nine of the project um, and we've been running up to 10 sessions per week. Over this 12 week period, we will have run about 80, between 80 and 90 live sessions. I lose track. There are new, new ones added every single day. We've had over 450 pupils engaged from across England and Wales um, over the first nine weeks of the project. And, you know, we're trying to capture the student voice through this. The idea of the project is not to be a top down approach. It's about responding to what pupils want. So we keep flexing to the feedback that we receive from them. So this one really stood out to me. The project has introduced me to new subjects I've never learned about before. So it's made me very excited about what I'll learn in uni. We were really conscious that this big gap between schooling education and university education was gonna cause a lot of anxiety in our young people, um, as well as a real skills gap in terms of what to expect when you get to university. Um, and I'm sure university colleagues who are present here will be um, struggling with um, that conversation about blended learning, face-to-face -face learning, complete online learning, and what our young people can expect when they turn up in October is yet to be determined. So we wanted to upskill them and get them ready for some really exciting blended learning and for them to be excited by it, not put off. 88% of our participants have said that it's increased um, their curiosity. So our project in its normal iteration is all about stretch and getting young people to think beyond um, what they learn in the classroom, i.e. can you order a baguette in France? I don't really care about that. What I do care about is are you intrinsically motivated to think about how a young person in France is going to approach um, the world? I think that's, that's interesting and how does that approach intersect with your own global view. Um, loads of them have talked to family and friends, which is a really interesting um, element, given that sometimes we really find a disjuncture um, in terms of what we're saying in school about how important languages are and what's, being, and what's happening at home and what's happening in the media. These big long quotes, I've put them up there just for you to have a bit of a read. But again, it's reinforcing this idea that they're really curious about other cultures. We ran a cultural, um, well, we ran a language taster session on Nepalese. Um, it was run by one of my mentors, an undergrad. Oh God, two minutes. Um, I knew I was going to run over. Really fascinating. Well, the top three things I think a really important point to make is that students have said they really wanted to speak. Um, so that idea of being disempowered verbally wanting to communicate with other people and build and develop a community has been very, very important. Um, the welcome, welcoming environment has played a really, really important part in that aspiration for university, as well as confidence. Young people have lost confidence in this time as learners and as people of a community. Um, and I think building that and reinstating that, that feeling of coming, greeting other people has been really, really important. Claire, why is this important? 
Yes, yeah, so I think, you know, listening to the, the, again, the other um, interventions today, I think for us it's been really important to give um, these young people aged 16 to 18 motivation to keep going. I mean, when you're sitting at home in your bedroom uh, or in your living room trying to think about why should I carry on engaging with education, it's giving them these really interesting role models um, for, for their university students who've been there as teachers, mentors and near peer learners. So the key thing is motivation and seeing somebody like you three to five years on that you can be. Motivation, aspiration. I think secondly, we wanted very much to plug a gap and to be aware that although um, giving people resources to have a look at, you know, look at, you know, um, in their own time, is it the same as building that community online? So synchronous online community building has been really important, respectful, professional, educationally inspiring, we hope, so that important of community of learning. I think then lastly, of course, we've been absolutely key here that the whole project is supporting schools. We're not they're replicating the curriculum, we're not replicating what they might do in the classroom, but we're supporting, giving that peripheral support, that conditional support to keep learners going. So when they go back to school now in Wales and in September or in October to university, that student still feels engaged and wants to carry on exploring learning on a discovery model. Again, we're supporting in many ways a Welsh vision for education, discovery and curiosity, and we put Blanche at the real heart of that. Thank you.